And here is the front of the book, Tea Party Patriots, A Second American Revolution. Mark Meckler and Jenny Beth Martin are the authors. Jenny Beth Martin, when did the Tea Party and how did the Tea Party movement start? We started back in 2009 when the stimulus bill was passed. Rick Santelli on CNBC had this huge rant complaining about the stimulus package and people really, it resonated and responded to people. And we started getting active using smart girl politics and top conservatives on Twitter. But, uh, but you personally, how did you get started with this? I, I was active with those two groups, TCOT and SGP, and we started tweeting about it. And the very next day after his rant, we had a conference call using freeconference.com. And then the following week, we had tea parties across the country, 48 with 35,000 people in attendance. Where were you living at the time and what were you doing? I was in Atlanta, Georgia, and I was actually, at that point, my husband and I were coming out of bankruptcy. We had just lost our home, our car, and we were cleaning houses to be able to make ends meet. Mark Meckler, where are you from? Where, did, where were you located when you started? I still live in a small town in Northern California, and I was not politically active, probably like most people in the country, not affiliated with either party, but I was frustrated, probably like most people in America. And when I heard Santelli's rant, it really resonated with me. I held one of the first tea parties in the nation, like Jenny Beth. I was in Sacramento, California. 150 people showed up on February 27, 2009. And for me, that really ignited a fire. I saw people from a very broad cross spectrum that were just tired of government run amok. So when people hear about the Tea Party movement, are, they, are you two the leaders of the Tea Party movement? Oh, definitely not. I mean, people describe the movement as a leaderless movement. I don't think that's accurate. It's actually a movement with millions of leaders all across the country. Our organization alone has over 3,000 local chapters. Those are led by people on the ground in their communities, kind of as the founders always intended it to be. Now, in your book, Jenny Beth Martin, you talk about the five pathways to liberty. What are they? We have the economic, well, our 40-year our goal is important to state is that we're, we're working to sway Americans to our, our core values of fiscal responsibility, constitutionally limited government, and free markets. And we have, we want to have over 60% of Americans have those in their hearts and their minds. We think if that happens, then when they go to vote, they're not gonna be voting for a person or a party, they're gonna be voting for our constitution and the ideas that made America great. So there are five pathways to get there. The economic, the uh, political, the judicial, education, and culture. And Mark Meckler, expand on those. Well, really, these are things where we felt are key to returning the nation to its founding principles. And these don't come from Jenny Beth or I. These are things that we've heard from the grassroots all across the country over the last three years. So for example, there are reforms that are necessary in order to get our economy going again, in order to free people entrepreneurs to produce the wealth and prosperity that only they can, that government cannot. In education, there's wide agreement across the country that our education system is broken. So there are fundamental reforms. One of them is to free parents to have more choice in the system. So when parents are invested, parents have the choice, the educational system is better. Then of course we have politics, uh, judiciary, and, and the broader culture at large. We want to encourage members of the Tea Party uh, to call in this morning. You can see the lines up on the screen, 202 is the area code for our numbers. Mark Meckler and Jenny Beth Martin are our guests. They, why is it that you two wrote this book? How did you two get together to write this book? We got together after having communicated on the conference calls and Facebook and Twitter and started Tea Party Patriots. We were one of five people, two of five people who started Tea Party Patriots. And as we've gone through, we wanted to make sure there was a way to convey to Americans what the Tea Party is really about, other than just short little 30 second sound bites. Uh, Jenny Beth, do you think that uh, the Tea Party movement has been fairly portrayed in the media? I think that, the, that it's not about whether we're fairly portrayed or not, it's about making sure that we, as the people who are part of the Tea Party movement, let our fellow Americans know what it truly is about. So sometimes they're favorable reports, sometimes they're not, but it's not about the media, it's about us making sure that we get our message out there. Is the Tea Party's influence increasing, waxing, waning? Where is it, Mark Minkler? Well, it's, I think it's increasing. If you look at the major accomplishment of the Tea Party, it's really less about legislation or elections, it's about the dialogue. If you look at the dialogue in the country right now, it's all Tea Party dialogue. All the Republican candidates are being forced to speak to Tea Party values. 
And frankly, almost every election in the country now revolves around fiscal responsibility, debt, deficit, the Constitution, free market enterprise. These are things that the Tea Party movement brought to the fore. Uh, there was an announcement, uh, or there's an article in the overnight papers that said that uh, they've reached agreement on the payroll tax and that it won't be paid for necessarily. Um, there's also uh, reports that the transportation bill is being pulled. Two pieces of legislation that you probably have an opinion on. And what does that say about the Republicans in Congress right now to you? It probably says two different things. I mean, first of all, on, on the extension of the payroll, ta payroll tax holiday, uh, I think it says that the Republicans still don't get that the American people want to know how they're going to pay for things. And across the American public, people understand that the primary issue, debt and deficit, people are concerned about that issue along with the economy. So this idea that the Republicans think that they can spend, it maybe just spend more slowly than Democrats are spending, Frankly, it's all the same thing. They're spending our children and our grandchildren into the dustbin of history if they don't change. And then on the transportation bill, I think that's hopeful. There are Republicans in Congress that are objecting to that transportation bill because it has a lot of spending in it. They don't really have a way to pay for that spending. And again, I think that shows that some of the new folks that were elected to Congress get why they were sent there. Jenny Beth Martin, uh, Mike tweets in to you, do you believe Tea Party and Occupy have any shared interests? I think that we're all concerned about big business and big government and big labor working together to benefit each other and not take, not consider what benefits America and the everyday Americans. I think that after that we go separate ways. We believe in, in independence and self-reliance and we believe that competition is good for America. We don't think that the government solves our problems and I. I think that Occupy Wall Street prefers government government solutions. Larry tweets in, does constitutional government mean that entitlements must be dismantled? No, Larry, I don't think it's that simple. I think we look at the Constitution, you apply it to individual programs, and on a program-by-program -program basis, you make that decision. I think it's important to know that when you're talking about the Tea Party movement, and I've talked to thousands of people in the movement and with them and listened to them, I don't hear anybody saying that we want people on the streets, that there should be no social safety net. It's not about a lack of compassion. It's really about this appropriate size and scope of government. When does this book come out? It's out. It came out on Valentine's Day. And um, what is the 40-year plan, if you could expand on your 40-year plan that you talk about in this book? We want to, we want to make sure that America understands and our, our, our fellow Americans understand that as Americans, we vote, and that is a step, a first step in the right direction. It's not the only responsibility we have as citizens, and we have to make sure that we're holding our elected officials accountable. The payroll tax extension, they're going to do this and extend it till the end of the year, and then after the elections, they're going to have to go in and figure out what they do going forward once they hit December 31st. And it's during that time when it's a lame duck Congress that people go back to their lives and don't pay attention to what's going on. And that's when, when things are happening. It's our job to hold people accountable who we elect. And in Aurora, Colorado on our independent line, you're first up with Mark Meckler, Jenny Beth Martin, Tea Party Patriots, and The Second American Revolution is the name of the book. Hi, uh, good morning. Um, I worked for one of the major financial institutions in the mortgage division and saw firsthand what the private industry did uh, in a matter of a few months because of their irresponsibility caused millions of jobs being lost, um, just um, decimating the tax bases of our cities, communities, states, etc. And uh, I'm just uh, appalled at the a seemingly ignorance of the Tea Party of what actually happened uh, with the private sector. And, and just as one illustration that we can even see currently in Europe, the broad spectrum of belief that banks have to be propped up and bailed out in order to protect their bond investments in countries that they deliberately invested in that they knew were hugely bad investments. So, Ann, we're actually, I mean, you say the ignorance of the Tea Party and you're appalled by it, but we're actually in 100% agreement. 
This idea that banks should be propped up by the government is simply wrong. And, and what you've done here, what they've done, and it's actually what government has done, is government has allowed uh, private industry to maintain its profit motive uh, 